watching The Close on BNN Bloomberg. We are less than an hour to the end of the trading day, but much of the talk has been dominated by the federal budget, which came down yesterday at 4 p.m. And the headline grabber has been the increase to capital gains tax for those gains above 250000 Now, the government says it only affects a small portion and is necessary to fund at generational fairness, particularly to help ease the housing crisis that the country finds itself in with respect to lack of affordable housing options, which include on the buying options as well as on the rental side. As part of this, the government, the federal government, which introduced this budget, uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau that said that any vote against this budget would be a vote against fairness, particularly pointing to the Conservative Party if they were to possibly oppose this. Let's hear from a member of the Conservative Party. Andrew Scheer is the House Leader of the official opposition of the Conservative Party. Let's get your reaction, Andrew. I know uh, generally there's been disappointment on Bay Street with respect to the capital gains tax, but what do you say that if you are to come out against it, you're coming out against fairness? Well, first of all, I should point out that the country doesn't just find itself in a housing crisis. Justin Trudeau caused the housing crisis. He caused it by flooding our economy with brand new cash created by the Bank of Canada, which caused the inflation crisis. He caused an interest rate crisis with his massive borrowing, which bid up the price of debt. And that's why homeowners are struggling to stay in their homes and renew their mortgages. So well, there's I nothing think, to fair, be fair about I think the, the pandemic had a, had a little bit to do with a lot of those factors. Well, about four, uh, the parliamentary budget officer, Trudeau's own budget watchdog, concluded that tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars had nothing to do with the pandemic. So this, this bogus excuse that Trudeau couldn't help it because of the pandemic has been completely debunked and there's no excuse for the continued massive deficits that's driving up inflation and interest rates this year the government of canada under justin trudeau will spend more on servicing the interest on that debt than on health care so it's not just affecting bay street it's affecting main street there are thousands of Canadians who are moving back in to their parents' house because they can't afford to buy their own home. It is completely unfair what Justin Trudeau has done, locking out a generation of Canadians from the dream of home ownership. And now he's trying to come along after nine budgets that caused the crisis in the first place and saying that the same approach, the same policies by the same prime minister will somehow have a different result this time. We're not buying it. Canadians aren't buying it. But it's not the same. They've increased the capital gains tax, which hasn't been done since 2001, to fund the problem that you've pointed out, that there is a problem with respect to housing. They have rewarded local gatekeepers, putting up barriers to new development. They have tried this before. They, their signature housing accelerator, which they're still promoting as, as this magical thing that's going to build homes, the housing minister himself has admitted he can't trace a single new home built under that program. They've launched these signature programs and then canceled them. And their own housing agency has said that new home builds will go down this year and will go down next year. So we're getting fewer homes built under Justin Trudeau, higher taxes on Canadians, higher inflation and higher interest rates. This is the exact same approach that he has tried for eight years. This is now his ninth budget, and it is all a complete repackaging of the same approach that has caused the crisis in the first place. The number one question that I've received from investors, from economists, is what is the Conservative Party going to do about it? Is this a campaign issue? Is this something that, if in office, the Conservatives would repeal? Well, what we've said is that we are going to focus on four key priorities. One is Taxing the tax, the carbon tax, which is a major culprit in higher prices. It's a major culprit in uh, higher food prices and home heating costs and transportation costs. We're going to provide relief to Canadians by axing the tax. We're going to fix the budget to bring down inflation and interest rates. None of this government spending will have an, any impact on Canadians if they have to renew their mortgage five or six percentage points higher than uh, they locked in five years ago. None of it is going to help Canadians if inflation stays high. So we're going to fix the budget to bring down inflation and interest rates. We're going to build the homes by incentivizing local municipalities to get out of the way. 
there's a CD Howe report that shows that approximately 140 to 190 thousand dollars of costs on a new home are directly linked to delays and red tape at the local level. So we're going to reward municipalities that get homes built faster and punish those that continue to put up roadblocks to new development. And we're going to make our community safer by stopping the crime, getting dangerous and re repeat offenders off our streets, back in uh, back in custody so they stop terrorizing law-abiding Canadians. So that's our focus. We're going to see what happens in the next year because this is, you know, Justin Trudeau is doubling down on this failed approach. We don't know how much worse it's going to be, but I can assure your your uh, your audience today that those are the uh, core priorities that Conservatives will focus on. Those were the priorities before the budget as well. I, again, the question is, what about this particular new tax? Business leaders want to know what is the future of it. If you disagree with it or the potential consequences, why not come out and say this is something that we wouldn't stand for as well? Yeah, well, you know, we're taking a, a, a look at, at the entire, you know, all aspects of the budget. We'll have more to say as we get closer to the next election when Canadians will be able to choose between Justin Trudeau's plan to quadruple the carbon tax, to keep inflation interest rates high, or our plan to provide relief to Canadians by bringing interest rates, inflation lo uh, lower, and by axing the tax. But I should point out, we've, we've seen this now for nine budgets where Justin Trudeau pretends like there's somebody else that's going to pay the bill. And at the end of the day, it's not his trust fund that pays higher taxes. It's not his billionaire friends who invite him to their private islands. It's the welder, the mechanic, the nurse, the single parent. They all pay more either through direct higher taxes, like in the carbon tax, or through inflation and interest rates. So th th this is a this is the exact this is just more of the same. Canadians should 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 be sure of one thing. Under Justin Trudeau, they will just keep getting more of the same, more of the same policies that caused the hardship and the misery in the first place. With Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives, they will get that much needed relief. I guess uh, so. You're you're saying on this particular issue, it's sort of still wait and see that that the party is trying to assess where they stand on it. Can you offer any insight into what are some of the variables? Um, you know, why isn't this kind of an easy answer? Well, as I said, as we get close to the next election, we'll have a more comprehensive uh, idea of just how bad things are with the economy and with the nation's finances. You ask uh, about variables. Well, uh, the government in their own budget documents are banking on interest rates falling very aggressively. They're, they're taking a very optimistic view on that. We don't yet know that that is a completely unknown. Nobody can actually predict that. If people could predict exactly where interest rates will be a year and a half from now, uh, there'd be uh, you know, there'd be a lot more uh, people selling financial advice. Uh, he's banking on the Canadian dollar staying where it is. He's actually banking. This is a government that attacks our energy sector every chance it gets. He's actually counting on oil prices staying at a certain level to fund all the all the spending. What we do know right now, what we know today is that Justin Trudeau, for the first time in Canadian history, is paying more to service the national debt than he is on health care. That means that all those hardworking middle class Canadians that he pretends to help now have to go to work to pay the bankers and the bondholders who own the government debt that he's flooded the market with over the last few years. So we're going to, as we get close to the next election, Canadians will have a crystal clear idea of how Conservatives will offer tax relief and get our economy growing again. So then is it wrong to assume that because there's no answer today, that means that there is a chance that this is a policy that is maintained under the Conservatives? I understand that you're trying to uh, get me to answer a hypothetical uh, question. It's I've, not hypothetical. I've, I've, it's I've right there. No. It's in front of no, us. No, no, this no, is the no, number no, one I, question no, no, that no. business leaders have I, today about your party. Yeah. Well, the, the election's not today. The election is uh, sometime in the future. And when that happens, every single Canadian will have a very clear understanding of what kinds of relief conservatives will be offering them.